In this video, we will learn about BGM. BGM stands for blood glucose monitoring and nurses do this procedure as a part of routine testing on the clients or to identify the clients going into hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia. Before you go to your client's room to do this procedure, make sure you gather the supplies, which include glucometer, lancet, strips, gauze piece, and alcohol swab. As the supplies are ready, let's head to the client's room to perform this procedure. After performing hand hygiene and ensuring the privacy, introduce yourself to the client and identify the client using two identifiers, patient's full name and date of birth, or MRN number, which stands for medical record number. Explain the procedure to your client and obtain the verbal consent. Make sure that your patient is seated in a comfortable position in a bed or in a chair. Assess the possible puncture site such as fingers and forearms. Look for edema, inflammation, cuts or sores. Avoid any bruised areas and open lesions. Keep in mind that many type of blood glucometers are available, so you must follow the manufacturer's specific instructions for that model. Most of the glucometers require client's information, which can be put into the glucometer by scanning the client's wristband. After entering the client's information, make sure you scan the barcode on the strips container and insert the test strip into the blood glucose monitor. Clean the previously identified puncture site with alcohol swab and let it air dry. Make sure you don't blow air on it. Let it air dry. Once it's dry, then you can use the lancet to puncture the site and obtain the blood drop. Wipe away the first drop of blood using a gauze pad. Make sure you wipe away the first drop of the blood using a gauze piece. The reason we do that is you want to avoid the mixing of the blood with the alcohol because if that happens, it's going to give you altered blood glucose levels. Touch the test strip to the drop of the blood and ensure the designated area of the test strip is completely filled with the blood. Once you obtain the results on the glucometer, you can remove the strip from the meter and discard the lancet, strip and the supplies into the proper waste bins. Remove gloves, perform hand hygiene, and also document the procedure. As a part of follow-up care, assess the puncture site for any bleeding, discuss the test results with the patients, and give the patient the chance to ask any questions. Encourage the client to become more active and be participant in their own care. Some of the special considerations and key points which is very important for this. Always make sure that you do the control test every 24 hours or the meter will not detect the blood glucose accurately. So that is the protocol which most of the hospitals they follow. Include your initials, date of opening and expiration date on all the newly opened test strips and control vials. Mostly the test strips expire six months after opening and control vials expire three months after opening. The blood glucose meter must be cleaned between uses when the same instrument is used for multiple clients. Check for any client isolation precautions. Some facilities require extra cleaning or care of the equipment. For example, placing the meter into the bag for use when you are specifically using this for the clients who are on isolation precautions. Also make sure that you bring into the clients only the supplies which are absolutely necessary. And if you have any unused supplies, do not take them back to the common area. You can leave them in the client's room itself. Hello nurses and nursing students. I hope you guys enjoyed learning blood glucose monitoring. What's next? Next is practicing NCLEX style questions. So here is the first question on your screen related to this skill. So question says, which of the following instructions should the nurse include when teaching a client with diabetes about the blood glucose monitoring? And guess what? It's select all that apply SATA question. So here are all your options. Again, pause your screen. Remember true and false strategy and try to attempt this question. And then I will go with you guys and tell you which one is the right option. 
Option number A, wash your hands with cold water each time you check your blood sugar. Do you think it's correct? That is incorrect guys because washing hands with cold water does not promote vasodilation prior to blood sampling. So that's not an appropriate technique. Option number two, select the lateral side of your fingers to puncture for blood. Do you guys think that's the correct one? Yes, and I hope you guys learned that in the video too. That is correct because the lateral side of the fingers is the recommended place to lancet the skin to obtain the blood sample. And the central tip of the finger has a dense nerve supply. So that's why it's sensitive for lancing, okay? Let's just review the next option, which is option number C. Compare the blood glucose meter readings to the normal blood glucose levels and previous test results. What do you guys think? That's absolutely correct because this is a recommended practice and action when monitoring the blood glucose to assess the results of the blood glucose and decide if the further action is needed or not. And you guys know in nursing, as nurses, we always compare the results and see where the patient stands out. All right, let's just see the option number D. D says it's not necessary to match the code from the test strip vial to the glucose meter when you are in hurry. What do you guys think? All right, what do you guys think about D? D is incorrect because that action is direct appropriate and required action during the blood glucose monitoring procedure. Let's just review option number E. Store your glucose test strips in a warm, sunny location. Wow, sounds fancy. Everybody wants to go on vacation, hey? But let's just review this option E. That is incorrect because blood glucose test strips should be stored in a tightly sealed container away from exposure to the light. So this means your answer is B, C. B and C is the answer. Your A, D and E options are incorrect. Okay, are you enjoying so far? Give me a thumbs up. I know, behind the screens. Yeah, there you go. Okay, let's just move on to the next question. All right, guys, here's the next question on your screen. The nurse is reviewing the blood glucose results of a client with diabetes. The client's blood glucose level have been consistently higher than the target range for the client. Which of the following factors should the nurse consider as a potential cause of the recorded high blood glucose levels? Think, think, think. Here are your the four options on your screen. Again, pause and think for yourself what's the right answer. All right, guys, let's just review option number A, low carbohydrate diet. That's incorrect because you guys know that the act, this action would most likely lead to the improvisation or improved blood glucose reading. Option number B, missed dose of insulin. That is correct. Missing doses of insulin can cause increased blood sugars and could certainly be a factor that patient is having consistently high readings. All right, I know you guys already know now C and D is incorrect, but again, it's good to review. Option number C says decreased stress levels. Well, you guys should know that's incorrect because decreased stress levels are associated with normal blood glucose levels. When the stress levels are high, I know when you're writing NCLEX, hey? No, just joking. When the stress levels are high, this can increase a client's blood glucose because of the cortisol. And that is related during the stress and can cause higher than normal blood glucose levels. Let's just review the last option here. Increased exercise. And I hope you guys know, it is incorrect because increase in exercise is not a potential cause of high glucose readings. It's gonna rather make your blood glucose normal, right? Because healthy doing exercise and dieting improves your blood sugar levels, okay? Let's move on to the next question. Here is the question on your screen. Nurse is providing education to a client with gestational diabetes. Which statement by the client indicates the further teaching is needed? Here are the four options on your screen. You now, I know you guys know the drill by now. Pause the screen and see for yourself what the answer is. All right, option number A. I should test my blood sugar levels four times a day. Well, this is where the students, they get tricky in the NCLEX as well, right? You're gonna say, wow, that seems like a correct option. But remember, go back to the question. What the question says, further teaching is needed. Means you're looking for wrong statements or the bad statements. So A is incorrect because it is recommended for gestational diabetes patients to test their blood sugar levels four times a day. Let's just review option number B. It's a good idea to keep a log of my blood glucose monitoring readings. Seems correct, but again, go back to the question. 
according to the question this is incorrect because yes it is a recommended practice for the client with gestational diabetes to keep the record of their blood sugar levels so do you think it needs further teaching no it doesn't okay so it is incorrect now let's just review option number c i will give myself insulin at every meal wow let's just think about this one option number c is correct guys because not every pregnant woman with diabetes will require insulin administration it will also depend on the patient's blood sugar levels at every meal in order to administer an insulin dose therefore the statement indicates that patient needs more teaching let's just review the last option eating small frequent meals will keep my blood sugars within normal range seems like a correct statement but incorrect as per the question it is actually recommended for the gestational diabetic patients to eat small frequent meals to maintain the blood sugar levels however do you think patient needs further teaching for this no because patient is already saying the right thing so your correct answer is answer number c good job i hope you guys are still with me and enjoying and learning these nclex style questions so next question for you guys a client newly diagnosed with diabetes mellitus is being discharged home from the hospital what health education should the nurse provide select all that apply i guess that's your favorite style of question isn't it all right guys so here are the five options on your screen and you guys know the drill pause and see for yourself which one is the right answer don't forget to use true and false strategy all right so let's just review option number a how to dispose of sharps in non permeable and puncture resistant containers what do you guys think about it that is correct the client should know how to prevent needle stick injury prior to the disposal of needles so make sure yes that's a correct option option number 2 how to reuse lancets when the client is trying to save money on supplies hmm option number b is incorrect the client should not be reusing the lancets because they become dull and which will cause the client to increase pain which could lead to non compliance and also increase the risk for infection let's just review option number c provide information for community support groups what do you guys think about this this is correct guys because it is important for the client to be able to connect to others in the community for additional support option number d ensure the client's family can perform a test if the client becomes ill or unable to test themselves what do you guys think option number d is correct if the client becomes ill it could be due to the low or high blood sugar level so the family needs to know how to check the blood sugars all right looking into the last option here how to track findings to watch for the trends in the blood glucose levels and that is correct the client needs to be educated on how to track for the trends in the blood glucose level and to let the hcp or the physician know if the results are abnormal and that could indicate that something is going wrong so e is the correct option so if you are evaluating so this means option a is correct c is correct d is correct and e is correct only incorrect option is option number b all right i hope you guys enjoyed learning clinical skill as well as nclex style question practice that's what we do at fpn pc we are always here to support the students and make sure you contact us if you have more queries please like and subscribe to our channel and if you like this video share it with your friends thank you very much